We're fortunate to have uh, Simon Evans here from the Wine Us Foundation on the banks of one of the streams in the, the, the huge catchment that is the Wine Us. Simon, can you just give us an introduction to some of the features of the, the habitat that we've got here and also the work that you guys do? Okay, we're on, we're on the Edu here. It's, um, it's one of the more important salmon, salmon, salmon spawning streams, but also it's a very useful little trout fishery. Mm. It, we're in Radnorshire here. Um, three million, oh, three, three million people, twenty-seven. Sorry, twenty-seven thousand people, three million sheep. Mm. So um, mm. sheep and cows were absolutely battering the banks. And um, we started about a decade ago. It was two thousand and two. We put up fences on, mm. on on the streams, and we thought that would be the solution. And it's been watching the evolution of this section. We've learned a lot from it, and we've sort of developed our own habitat prescriptions as as we've watched the fisheries data here change. Mm. And um, <clears throat> I mean, what we're looking at here. Um, this is classic adult trout habitat, salmon par habitat that we've got here. Yeah. Um, the adult trout habitat, we're trying to accrete as much as possible. We're not putting it in, we're just letting it come in naturally, woody debris. Right, so, so it's, it's as much about not removing we, stuff that's already good. Exactly, rather than tying stuff in. Yeah. But um, we've been able to do that because we've got the luxury of time here. On our later prescriptions where we're trying to get short, sharp hits, mm. we're actually pleaching stuff into the banks. Like This is what we're doing in our current Isaac project, which is our Life Plus project on, okay. the, on the Irvine where we're taking a, a whole river system that would be a big river system anywhere else in the country, but it's just a small tributary of the River Wye. Mm. And we're, <laughs> we're doing absolutely everything that we can do on it to try and make it good. Yeah. And um, it's a lot of what we're doing there we've learnt from here. Yeah. So, I mean, I can see when I'm looking at the banks, we've got a lot of very heavy clay soil this side of the fence. Yeah. It's a lot rougher and more shaggy and sort of more natural looking, lots of good sort of quality habitat that yeah. side. But just as an idea, how sort of what kind of time scale are we talking about to achieve what we've got on the river side of the fence to compare to what we've got here? It all depends on altitude. You have to take altitude into the into the equation. Uh, where we're doing our lower streams that are a couple of hundred feet above sea level, we would have rampant growth within one or two years. Mm. But here, up at altitude, it's almost ten years since we put the fence up for for that that amount of growth. Right. And it's um it's everything is just that little bit slower. I mean, the bumblebees are smaller. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything, but. It's it's, it is this is perfect water perfect salmon water yeah. trout thrive up here salmon thrive up here yeah yeah and I'm, I'm again looking up the bank i'm noticing things that we're very keen on um, you know sort of promoting the wild trout trust you know we've got some fantastic root wad cover which is yeah. a real favorite for all kinds of reasons um, but again that's not necessarily being installed um, deliberately no, it's, it's just it's just come down naturally but we 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 just walk up and down this about once a year yeah. and just keep an eye on how the woody debris is arranging itself if, if there's a root wad and it's formed what, what I call the classic drawing pin form, mm. which is the root wads upstream and it's being anchored by the tree, tree stump below, that's yeah. absolutely stable. It can be left in perpetuity and you can let the, the currents evolve around it and yeah. it dig and, and create the, the shears and the vortexes for the trout. Um, when it's, when it's, in, it's still in a mobile phase, we can just tweak it and arrange it into yeah. that phase. Yeah. But we, we haven't, we found on, we've got enough trees on these streams that we don't actually need to introduce wood, it's coming in of its own accord. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Well, should we have a walk up and see what else we can see yeah, uh, on the stream? Yeah. The dogs aren't appreciating the mud, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I am. <laughs> um, we're standing here, this is a historic f feature. Once upon a time, you would have just these bare banks between the trees and this is what all these streams used to look like before we did the work on them and so what we've done here is we put a fence up to keep the stock off and we've cut the trees which has let the light in and this is a 10 year old coppice here and in doing so this whole bay that used to be bare earth is just steadily revegetated and as it's revegetated it's it's catching the sediment on the winter floods growing a little bit more and as the edges are moving out you start to get stuff hanging on the sides. You've got cow parsley here, brambles down there, creating a water shear. And this is your nought plus, your trout fry habitat. And these streams are often sadly lacking in trout fry habitat. And it's quite important to take that into account when you're trying to manage the whole population of trout. I'm standing here on the banks of the Edu and I'm standing on a nicely secured root wad. Um, this is just a lump of tree that's fallen in, come down, we've trimmed off the end, um, or the end has been trimmed off. I think it's probably a historic coppice. Um, it's, it's orientated itself in a way that is absolutely secure. You've got a, a nice root wall which is deflecting, deflecting the current. The force of the winter floods will be coming down and hitting it. Nice deep scour going down the middle of the river. That's your adult trout habitat. It's where the salmon, when they're running up, can rest, rest and be out of protection. 
And because of its current position with the trunk downstream and the, the tree, tree roots upstream, it's absolutely secure. This just will not move. And you can see that from the fact that the gravel is, is, is accreting around the edge now. And it will slowly, the, the stump, the stem, the, sorry, the trunk will slowly bury the gravel and it will just over the years secure. We um, keep an eye on these streams. We don't actually introduce any debris, but we keep an eye on these streams and we just look at the debris that's coming in and try to make it secure because the, the situation we don't want for salmon or for trout for that respect is we don't want large areas blocked off for spawning fish. So as long as it's accreting in this way and it's all permeable to the fish and it's creating fish habitat, brilliant. But as soon as you start getting impounding large big debris dams, then it's time to come in with a chainsaw and just lock them and just cut them and let them drift on drift off downstream. The ones that and that way you stop large charts, large parts of your catchment becoming unusable for, for fish spawning.